welcome to another 3ABN Today program. We are the Mitchell Sisters, and I'm Linda. I'm Brenda. And I'm Cinda. <laughs> and we have a special program planned just for you. We sure I do. I think you're going to oh, love it. <laughs> we have a super supper for you. Yep. Super duper soups. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And who doesn't love soup? I mean, it just, it's so soothing, and I That's just, right. I just love Our to dad's home. favorite meal. Yes. There's just something comfort, comforting about I, soup. I think yes. of home when I think of mm -hmm. soup. Mm -hmm. um, I always remembered that mom had a kettle of soup on the stove. All and the time. So did grandma. Yes. I was just going to yeah. say, we'd come into grandma's. Didn't and matter what time. Midnight. It could be midnight. Sometimes we'd be driving and we'd get in at midnight, one o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning, and she'd um, meet us at the door and she'd say, Hello, hon. I, you hungry? Yeah. I got some soup. Yeah, you she, come, and you come be hot on the stove. <laughs> you eat. We got the soup. And was her soup ever good? Yes. Now, awesome. I'll have to say that our soups are of a healthy version of, of Grandma's That's soups. That's right. Because uh, Grandma believed in lots of um, wonderful things, uh, tasting things that weren't so wonderful for our bodies, like butter and <laughs> things like that. So you're going to find out that I think even Grandma would approve of our soup. She, she, Absolutely. She right. would like the change. I like to cut corners, you know, to, for healthy corners. I call them my cut healthy corners because I like to, to make those changes for, that are healthy for us, but not sacrifice the taste. And I think that's one thing you'll find about these recipes. We don't sacrifice the taste to have you eat healthy. Wouldn't you agree? I absolutely mm -hmm. agree. <laughs> That's right. And one thing is that we've made a lot of soups for Dad, and who grew up on Grandma's cooking, and he says, oh, he said, these are super soups. So yeah. When, <laughs> when we want to like test it. a recipe for soups, <laughs> yeah. it goes to Dad. Dad's yeah. going to be our soup taster, and he's going right. to either give it the thumbs up or the thumbs down. You go back to the kitchen if you didn't get the thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes in preparing them, I was making some uh, soup, and I think I had some breads and things for it. And Mom and Dad have this new dog called Zeke, uh -huh. and they just love Zeke. But he, Zeke is very picky eater. He doesn't like to eat a lot like other dogs do. So as I was preparing foods, Dad say, let Zeke try it first. <laughs> <laughs> and Zeke would eat it, and Dad say, that's good. I'll good give it a sign. thumbs up. <laughs> Well, sis, well, shall well, let's we show them, them let's what show we're all, all doing? Yes, yeah, let's okay. show them all the different soups we're making today. We're going to start with the Tuscan four bean soup. Four very, different kinds of beans in there. and very healthy. Yes. And then we also have my ballpark soup. Oh, now, that's Cindy. a home run. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And then we're going to have zesty red lentil soup. Boy, now that zesty, does that mean it's got a little hot pepper in it? Mm, not it's, a lot. It's going to if I can help it. <laughs> Oh, broccoli rice soup. Ooh, now that that's a good. real hearty soup. Looks like a nice creamy mm -hmm. soup. And then Mexican corn chowder. If you like corn chowder at all, you're, you ought to try this one. It's got a little bit of zip to this one. All right. And we're going to have home style vegetable soup. Now, oh, who doesn't so get love ready, vegetable Dad. Soup? <laughs> and you know, I also want to say that um, if you do not have pen and paper here and you're worried about trying to get these recipes down, relax. Just sit back and enjoy the program, learn some new techniques, and later on, you can just go to 3abn.org, and you can click on the recipe button, and you can just download all these recipes and print them off. And if you don't have a computer, then that's okay. You, mm -hmm. Believe me, your neighbor... Call Brenda. Your, she'll send them to you. <laughs> I'm sure you have a neighbor or a friend or relative that has uh, access to the internet. And if so, you ask them if they would print it out. And like maybe it'd be a wonderful witnessing opportunity to your neighbor. So, you know, there's there a. There you go. There's something for everybody. If you don't have your own computer, that's okay. You can still get them, okay? Well, well we are ready to get started. Dum da dum da dum. Oh, this one's well, well, <laughs> Let's start off by reading the recipe so you can you can know what's in it. And if mm -hmm. you do have a paper and pen, you can write it down. All right. You will need two medium onions chopped, two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, one teaspoon of dried oregano, three-fourths cup of fresh basil chopped, two cups of carrots diced, two cups of celery diced, four cups of water, four tablespoons of McKay's chicken-style seasoning and broth, one 28-ounce can of crushed tomatoes, 
one 15 and a half ounce can of dark red kidney beans, one 15 and a half ounce can of pinto beans, one 15 and a half ounce can of garbanzo beans, and one 15 and a half ounce can of navy beans. Wow, that's a lot of beans. <laughs> That's <laughs> a lot good to me. of nutrition too, you know, and a lot of color. Look that's at the right. Color, color it like here it comes. Here comes. Here comes. Da -da -dum -dum. What that's was that, right. sis? Color your plate like a rainbow. There you go. If she said it. We can get it over with now. <laughs> that, but she's she's exactly right. I wanted to share something for some people that uh, tell me that they have trouble eating beans. There's a lot of people that say they have a lot of trouble digesting beans. And that um, one thing that if you go to a natural food store, there's a, um, a, a natural remedy that you can purchase to help with that digestion and you won't have that same effects. Um, I know there's, there's some in the store, but the one in the store is uh, that you can just buy in a regular store is usually not vegan. And the one in the natural uh, food store is a vegan alternative, so it will help you. So if you have trouble with that, don't just, you know, get rid of the beans out of your diet before you've tried that first. And if you just ask somebody in the natural food store, they'll be able to help you with that. Exactly. So let's get started. Sis, can you turn on the stove? I can do it. And uh, we have put um, four cups of water in here. And... Yes. Then you'll add your onions, which mm -hmm. I've already pre-cooked in a tablespoon you know of we extra did. virgin olive oil. <laughs> you know we did it. <laughs> so, um, someone emailed me last night and said that they were watching a cooking program and they were just saying, we just wanted to let you know we got the message. No raw under onions for you girls. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I've already done that. Um, and if you want, you could start out. We did. I did it ahead of time for sake of time. But you could put, um, when I'm home, I will put the tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil in the pan, then put in my raw onion, saute that, and then go ahead and add your water. But I've just, um, for the sake of time, have um, done yeah. that step already for you. Okay, so the onions are in there. We'll add the dried oregano. And then add the McKay's chicken style seasoning and broth and mix that up really good. Now, could they use vegetable stock or a vegetarian chicken stock or could they um, use You a, could, sure. Or I love the flavor of McKay's. Mm -hmm. I, it's just my favorite. In Is fact, it? it's one of my favorite seasonings. There's one um, of, um, uh, chicken base that I like too that's called, it comes in a jar and it's better than bouillon. It'll say better than bouillon, um, no chicken flavor. And it's a vegan. I love that too. It's and it comes in a jar in a natural huh. food store. You can get it in a no beef and, you, and a vegetable. Okay. Then you'll add your celery, and Mom will be proud of you. You got them all out. There you go. Hey, Mom, that was just for you. <laughs> and if you think we're kidding, Mom, <laughs> Mom watches, and Mom will say, "Now, <laughs> girls." And she says it very kindly. <laughs> she does. She does very kindly. Yes, she does. She lets us know if we're wa if wasteful. We, when you grow up and you have hardly nothing. You really, the one lesson they really taught us kids was not to be wasteful about That's anything. That's right, mom is frugal. Yes, my, That's my right. mom is very, and she, even if, even if that wasn't a case of financial, she would want us to, you know, be good stewards of, of the money that God's given us. So all, you know all also, the money's from God. You know what also mom's so. taught us? Yes. Is to be very creative with leftovers. <laughs> there you because go. Because mom doesn't waste anything. No, <laughs> no, she doesn't. Hey, I've added the, the crushed tomatoes. And then I'll just start adding the beans. And um, on the beans, you'll drain them, but you do not need to rinse them. Okay. And I don't even completely, as you can tell with this with this bowl, I don't even completely drain them. Um, just I just do. Take, I take just the take the most take of the juice. Most of it. Mm -hmm. And now with the um, with the navy beans, if you cannot find navy beans, you can also use the great northern beans. How about cannonball? Was it? Uh, can cannelli, can or? cannelli beans yeah. is, you know what that is? Those are white kidney beans. And you, you could go. use those too. And then the basil, I like to use the fresh basil. And here, sis, I'll let you stir. And I, I uh, That's actually got a grow. nice rich tomato broth to that. Do you see that already? That and looks yeah, so nice. That looks so I actually um, grow my own herbs. 
um, right outside my kitchen door, and in the winter time, I bring them in and put them on the window seal, mm -hmm. and in and put them along my kitchen counter. And I like to grow my own herbs. They're very simple to grow because if you buy fresh herbs in the store, they're very expensive. It also and so, looks pretty. I love it seeing all her it does. dried. Of course, you have to be home long enough to water your plants to let them grow. Well, so most of the time, I, if I want fresh herbs, I, I go to Cinder's house. <laughs> well, Joel takes care of the watering. Her husband. Well, sometimes. <laughs> I have to call and remind him, honey, I mean, it's right there in the kitchen sink. Honey, can you water the herbs for me? I get home, I go, um, honey? <laughs> <laughs> Looking a little welted. Yeah. So I just take a scissors and I just start cutting the basil in it. And um, as you can tell, you do not have to be real precise. I don't know, that looks really like you'd measured that out. It, it is. <laughs> and, and, you know, I don't want you to, to mess up here. No Hollywood recipes no. here. I no. love kitchen scissors. I do, too. I think every kitchen should have a pair of kitchen oh, scissors. Oh, I there, use them all It's the a time. scissors that's a little, hev it's more heavy duty, and so that it, it can really cut a lot of, um, right, and it's the know, only thing I've, heavier things. And you only use them with food. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. exactly. Now, you'll just let this simmer. For about 15 to 20 minutes, you just want the flavors to be able to combine, and um, that's all there is to it. It's, oh wait, that's not all there is to it. I do one more thing. What? Here's what I do. This is called a hand blender, and I take this hand blender, and um, when, it, it's cooked when, when your vegetables are tender, I take this hand blender, I stick it in my soup, I turn it on for um, probably just about um, maybe 30 seconds because you, you just want to get a little bit of blended. You don't want it to be a lot. And if you do not have one of these hand blenders, then just take two cups of the hot soup out, put it in your blender or food processor, blend it up, and then return it to the pot. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do. And it just uh, it just gives the the a soup a, a creamier look. It intensifies the yeah. flavor, and then you still have a, the the chunky vegetables. They could for probably it. use. They don't have one of these. They could use that masher, so you know to mash in there no, a little bit. No, well you could. It, it doesn't. Not, not everyone's going to have this. Well, that's what I'm saying. You can take two cups out and yeah. put it in your food processor or your blender. I was um, trying. I was trying to help out those people that might not have those fancy gadgets like our sister. Linda. Oh, sis, you could take one of those masters. And <laughs> Thank do. you. Thank you. I do not have a fancy gadget. I am the one that uses the grandma style. I was trying so. to help her out. Here. <laughs> okay, oh. you for for you and anyone who happens to be like our dear Thank sister you Linda, yeah. you can take one of those masters and just mash and mash and mash. But it's okay. You could do that too. Well, oh. another soup we have on the menu today is, uh, I believe, my ballpark soup. Let me read the recipe for you. You will need one tablespoon of canola oil, one medium onion, one cup of vegetable stock, eight cups of water, three beef bouillon cubes, two cups of cabbage, one cup of carrots, three cups of potatoes, one cup of vegetable hot dogs, or vegetarian hot dogs, a half a cup of cooked pasta noodles, a half a teaspoon of onion powder, and salt to taste. Now, I love recipes that are really, really easy, and I, th I think, you know, most people do because in this busy life that we all have, many of us don't have the time to put a lot of work and effort into every meal. And so this recipe could even be done in your crock pot at home. You could, before you leave for work, throw it all in, in your crock pot, or even the night before, if you have more time then, take your crock pot, you know, um, container out of your crock pot, you know, the ceramic one and throw every, all your ingredients in there uncooked put it in your refrigerator and before you leave for work throw it in your crock pot turn it on and it'll be ready for you when you get home from work isn't that awesome so this is one of those fast and easy um, I um, you'd probably just want to add your noodles at the very I'm end I'm getting there sis <laughs> boy I tell you what I wasn't gonna let that slide by <laughs> well I was just checking hey she's got <laughs> your back <laughs> but uh, again, um, I uh, really wanted those onions cooked, so I've got some pre-cooked onions in here. At home, you don't have on. to do that. So, yeah, crank that up for me. I've already got eight cups of water in here, and um, sis, you can just add the onions to that if you would, and uh, just making sure those are really, really dead. <laughs> you know, they're done. And then, um, uh, but you don't have to at home. They can just be your raw onions, throw them in. Um, then you can just add your celery, 
We're gonna add. We're gonna add every single Boy, she thing just here. She likes to keep me busy, doesn't she? I do. She's so good at it too. We're just, but don't let me hang on to that, sis. We do not want me to touch that thing. I am trusting you with that I noodle. Am, uh, those are the pasta noodles. Keeper of don't. the noodles. Don't put those pasta noodles in right now, <laughs> because that's something that you're gonna, you know. Five minutes before you serve, you're going to put those noodles in. They're already pre-cooked, ready to go, so you just put those aside. But everything else, sis, just have at it. You're going to put everything you want in there. Um, and Definitely and do not forget to put this in. Yes, that's This a, is the jalapenos. You can guess what it is. <laughs> the chopped jalapenos. I don't, was the jalapenos in that recipe? They are now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember the jalapenos in that recipe. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think those were supposed to be, uh, well, anyway, I guess we got jalapenos in there now. Um, cabbage. And soup, you can turn it into just about anything. Ha jalapenos are an option, folks. All right, there you go. If you don't want to spice up your life and add a little interest, then you don't have to add the jalapenos. Okay, and we have the red pepper. We have the carrots. We have the, um, uh, these are, it, the name of this soup is called ballpark soup. Guess what? We have ballpark, uh, you know, hot dogs in here. You know, only they're vegetarian hot dogs. So any vegetarian hot dog that you like of your choice, you can put in there. And, um, and those are a vegan um, one. That's right. And Sish, I need you to shake this up good for me. But you know what? This is already open, so be Get really you careful. Right here. Let's stand back. Let's stand back. <laughs> Get your soup right here. We're in the ballpark. Ballpark soup. <laughs> Okay, we need one cup of, the, of this vegetable stock in here as well. Is, is there something wrong with this picture here? I, I'm sort of set, liking it. I think it. I'm doing all the work over here. <laughs> she's, she's doing a good job. We're, yeah, you're really doing a good job. And then we're going to put our um, three bouillon cubes in it. And these I'm using today, is your, is, they're the, not, uh, the no beef bouillon cubes. You can open those for me if you would, sis. Oh, I thought we'll I was We'll throw the those in. One of the other, this is, I found the jar um, better than bouillon that I was talking to you about. This is the jar of base that I love that comes in. Underneath it says vegetable here. The other jars will look the same, only it'll say no chicken, and a, another one will say no beef. I love this product. And people ask us all the time if we have certain things that we like or we use. And so we are happy that we're not promoting that or trying to sell their product or anything. But just so that, um, you know, you under know what we're, what we're using. And, and uh, you can use it, too, if you want to or don't want to. Um, yeah. But I, it is a favorite of mine. Okay, there. Here, sis. She's, she's so good at just throwing I know that it. in there. You You're know, doing I a just, good job. Yeah. Take me out to the ball. Ah! <laughs> oh, I got it again. Uh, Take me out to the crowd. <laughs> hey, home run. It's home run. No, I that's don't know. sliding in. Oh, is a home run is sliding in? Okay, not the athletic one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I may not even have the right sport. Was that ball game or was that a football or I don't know? Well, throw. if you're throwing something, it could be just about any any, any kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. I, well, I'm never going to make it in a sports hall of fame. Speaking of ball games, Dad and Mom used to always make sure that we didn't go to other people's houses, but when they came to ours, they were always there to play with us. So Dad had a big ball game. Oh, yes, did. yes. And he would be the pitcher, and he'd keep. We thought it was wonderful that Dad played ball with us. And now that we got older, we said, you know what? He's a pretty smart dad, you know, <laughs> because he was right there. He with knew where kids, we where we, we were, were and what we were doing, and we had a ball. Yes. So, and Mom would be in there making pizza or soup for our ball games. So. And even if you couldn't, weren't very good at the sport, you still just ran around and had fun because that That's was me. <laughs> And I sometimes my brothers and sisters are like, you know, and I'm not playing football. They're like, the other way, run the other way, keep, you know, run the other way. You're going the wrong way. And I'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't know I was going the wrong way. And you know, one thing about it, Dad did not allow us. It wasn't an option that we couldn't play. No. We, we had to play. Yeah, that's you right. know, yeah. Everybody is taking part in the ball game. <laughs> but we loved it. Yes, yes we did. Yeah, that's true. We did. Oh, you got, you got some potatoes to throw in there, too. Oh, well. See? And this doesn't take really... I would never forget the potatoes, folks, because that's my favorite food. That's, well, one of your favorite foods. I know peanuts is one of your favorite foods, too. Oh, yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. See, we have quite a few favorite foods. What you're going to do is just going to simmer that on low, you know, for about an hour, and it'll be ready, or put it in your crock and pot either way. And then add 
Beep, dum, da, dum. Five minutes before you're ready to eat, just throw those cooked noodles in. And I use about a half a cup of those. If you like a, a more noodly soup, add more. It's okay. Uh, I don't. I like a little more broth with my soup. If I was fixing this for Cinda's husband, Joel, I would have more noodles in there. Because exactly. He, he's not going to eat. I was just going to say the same thing. <laughs> I would be adding more noodles. <laughs> yeah, because he doesn't like a lot of broth in the soup, but my husband does. So I, you know, I, we all kind of cook to please our husbands, and uh, and and I think our that's recipes reflect it. That's important to remember. That's right, ladies. We want to make our families happy. That's right. You know, we need to make them feel special too, and that's important. That's right. So I have one that's already done right over here, and you can see the consistency of you know where the the broth versus the vegetables and the and the noodles, and just kind of a nice blend. Uh, where it doesn't really overpower the soup. And it's so. delicious. I huh? think we should probably see if it's delicious because, you know, you just <laughs> never know. I mean, it, it, we ought to make sure that those noodles. I mean, I, I got to see if this is out of the ballpark or not. You know? Oh, that's, you this know. is true. So, da 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 da. Home run! <laughs> <laughs> oh, <shoot. laughs> oh, <shoot. laughs> that's good. Okay. <laughs> well, I think we have your zesty uh, lentil soup now. That's right. Ooh, can't so wait. we can put up the recipe for that. For the um, soup, you will need one and a half cups of dried red lentils, two and a half cups of canned diced tomatoes, one cup of mild salsa, seven cups of water, one tablespoon of fresh garlic, one half cup of fresh green onions, one half cup of onions diced fine, two teaspoons of sea salt, a half a teaspoon of seasoned salt, one teaspoon of onion powder, one half teaspoon of sweet basil, chopped, one cup of zucchini diced, one cup of summer yellow squash, two cups of fresh spinach, and two cups of tomato sauce. This zesty red soup does not have jalapenos in it. It doesn't? What? But, 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 hold it, hold it. You can add them if you choose, okay? <laughs> but you know what? For the record, Brenda's ballpark soup was not supposed to have jalapeno peppers in it. <laughs> yeah, so... For, <laughs> but so just so you know, when you get that recipe and you don't see the jalapeno peppers in my soup, and Cinder's being real sweet over here, but it's actually my fault because... Um, I'm going to fix for you in, a, in, uh, in shortly here my Mexican uh, corn chowder, and that one does have the jalapenos in it, and I think I put it on the wrong tray. So, you know what? It's my fault. So, just being real sweet to me, don't put the jalapeno peppers in my ballpark soup, okay? Really, don't do it. Please, don't do it. <laughs> but you know what? If you, if you accidentally do it, call me up, because I'll come over and eat just it. Just call it Cinda's ballpark soup. <laughs> <laughs> I don't okay. know. Our cam Ben's our camera guy here, and he's telling us that you can't go wrong with jalapenos in anything. So invite, so. so invite Ben and I over, and Ben and I will eat it. <laughs> All right, there you go. Okay, to get started, we're going to ask Brenda to turn the uh, burner. Yeah, uh huh? The burner on. I thought you were going to want me to pour that water. I was well, going to stand back. I thought I'd put the water in and then let you do all the rest. All here. right. Well. And we have some red um, lentils, and okay. the red lentils actually cook up faster yes, than the brown do. ones. So you'll find that out. And then we're going to put um, thin. Is this our red peppers? Red peppers. Red bell, sweet bell peppers. And our onions. I love red um, uh, peppers, the red sweet bell peppers. But um, somehow the green ones, you know, the green bell peppers, I'm just not a fan. They, well, they upset my stomach. So I don't, that, that's I don't use That's very common them. for green pepper. A lot of people can't eat green pepper. They, but the red and the yellow and the orange, that's a milder. And actually, um, not, there's a lot of nutrition in the red and the yellow and the, and the orange peppers. Well, so. I got mm -hmm. an email from one of our viewers that mm -hmm. told me why. They said green peppers, and I don't know, I haven't researched this myself, but they said that green peppers are not ripe yet. And that uh, that's, that's why, is because they told me that uh, when they're ripe, they turn red or yellow. So I don't know, so you'll <laughs> have to search that out for yourself. Where you're going to be getting the email. <laughs> <laughs> Email her. <laughs> but I do know that a lot things. of people can't eat the green rep, the green pepper soup. And if you can't find our her email address, just go to our website, mitchefsisters.com. M-I-C-H-E-F-F -F sisters.com. 
Boy, now you'll get those emails. <laughs> okay, well, that's fine. I love to hear from all of you, and, and we do. But I've just put in the sweet base salt, the, the seasoned salt, the onion powder, and now the sea salt. And then I'm going to have Brenda put in the um, tomato. Okay, I'm trying to be real careful here because I don't. Oh, and Linda, a fine look job. at that. Look at she gave me. a fine job you're doing. Yeah, I'm still splashing. Ew. Good so, gracious. It's you want to take that back? It's a good thing my top is red. I know. <laughs> Oh, this one too. Um, you know, Cindy, you're really good at this pouring thing over here. So why don't you come over here? Come on, over here, right over here. She's gonna do that for you. You know, it's that's really what good. Her top being right. the baby here. <laughs> well, I do. I and slop all over me all the here time. Here is the um, here is the salsa to add. And while she's yeah, she's gonna put the salsa in the soup too. And this is a mild salsa, and if you want to salsa, mm -hmm. and if you want to um, kick, kick it, it up, up a notch, little bit. you can put the medium in or whatever. But I like put the, the medium. Mild. <laughs> I say go for the medium and the jalapenos. <laughs> now we are going to cook this up until um, it's. About almost done. The vegetables are almost done. And then we will add the summer squash because it cooks really fast and the zucchini oh. and the la and then you will add uh, the chopped uh, frozen spinach. And if you use fresh, that's good. But if you use the spinach, the frozen one, be sure and let it thaw enough so that you can get all the um, juice out of it. And can I get a little tip? They need to make sure that they that you stir this soup up really good because look what happens to the lentils if you don't stir it up. See how they it, all they all kind of lump yeah, together. So yeah, you really you have to, to you need to break stir that it up, and break it apart, and and then find in there. So see, it's a good thing have a, you came over you'll there. You'll have a lentil dumpling or something. <laughs> It'll be one big, big lentil. I love lentils, and they're so good for us. Well, that is one reason why I called this uh, zesty uh, lentil soup. And it was not just because it was just had a little uh, with, with salsa in it. It's because, you know, when we eat really good foods for our body, we have a lot more energy. That's right. And that's true. Um, there's a. We're trying to keep this soup away from Cinda. <laughs> there's no. I can. Look, if you eat this soup, you too can have energy. <laughs> Cinda does jog every morning, and she kind of takes that after, well, does has a walk and everything, and she's very careful with her exercise and getting what she needs. And she hey, I'm careful from, with my exercise. I do. I'm really careful with my exercise. I, well, I, I walk fast everywhere I go. Well, she does walk fast. Cinda <laughs> takes after mom, but we're ready for our next recipe. I don't like to sweat. Wait, before, but, you know, I think you should rename this recipe. Oh, really? What's that? It looks like, um, to me, just looking at this with uh -huh. all this, looks like rainbow soup to me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Seriously. I, seriously, I think you I should. I think it should be rainbow I think soup. That should, I'm, I'm with, I'm with Linda. What do you think? Since you're going to email her anyway, <laughs> let, her, let know. her know. Rainbow soup or zesty red lentil. I think I'm going for the rainbow myself. Well, we'll let you see what it looks like when it's all done. We've got a sample right and here. And look at me. all that. Colored your plate like a rainbow right oh, there. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I should probably taste that because I'm going to need some more energy. What do you all think? I uh, should probably Oh, yeah, that. you need more energy. I, I need the energy. I think I should just try it. I think you have a lot of energy, my dear. Mm. Oh, <laughs> I'm going. Bye. <laughs> Get back here. <laughs> We're not letting her away from this program yet. <laughs> That's good. Okay, what's our next recipe? Well, our next recipe, I believe, is is it the broccoli rice soup? <gasps> oh, you all are going to love this. Let, let me read the recipe for you. You will need one large head of broccoli. One tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil, one tablespoon of soy margarine, one medium onion chopped, one large leek chopped, one cup of carrots peeled and chopped, one half cup of brown rice, the medium grain, four cups of water, two teaspoons of McKay's chicken style seasoning and broth, two bay leaves, and one eight-ounce package of better than cream cheese and salt to taste. This recipe makes a very hearty and nutritious meal. And, it, and it's not that hard to do either, is it? No, it's no. Even though you have leeks in here, and I know people, if they see leeks in a recipe, they get scared to death. Yeah, They're like, oh, I, I don't know how to use a leek, or I don't know how this to... This is quite interesting. <laughs> well, I'm going to show you. This um, is a leek, and... Um, 
we'll sh I'll show you how you prepare the leek and um, which part of the leek you use. And also just washing the leek is a pretty big orde ordeal because you get a lot of sand in right. there. Right, in fact, we might as well just do that now because well, that's hey, the next just, thing just we're get that out of the do. way. Let's just get it out of the way so <laughs> that they'll know, okay, and that you'll know. Well, I, I just wanted to give you a heads up. The very first time I decided I'd, I'd heard of a leek soup and I thought, oh, I'll try that. Never had had a leek before in my house. Didn't know what it was. And so I, you know, used it like I would an onion, you know, that I thought. Well, guess what? I had sandy soup. It was not good, and I wouldn't let anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so there is a little technique to this. I'm just going to share that with you right now. You don't want sandy soup. And you know, it's in, they, you'll find they they you'll find it in the grocery store like this with this big top on it. But you don't eat this part. No, it's so pretty tough. Right. So here, I'm going to lay this down. You only eat the light green part. So uh, to about here, you cut this off. Right. And you don't so even you mean, use this, but so I you guess don't even you have to wash that. this you for can, decorating. You know, you really could use this in a decoration. It's pretty. This would be really pretty on your table. Yeah. Seriously. And you'll wow. want to cut this end off right here, like that. And don't forget to cut it down the middle and then soak it in cold water for a little bit. Right. And you'll want to soak it. And then what I do is I just cut it down the middle, like this. And then I just go like this. Let's see, cut it. I make slits like that. And then I can just go like this. And if I have a better, if I had a better knife, we could chop it faster. But see, and then you get the little pieces like that. And I did wash this really thoroughly when I was, um, uh, before we brought it out here. Otherwise, you would have had, this is where I get a lot of that sandy stuff. You know, on the, the, on the, on the end, end, on the grin right, side. Right. So if you're not careful, you're going to get sand in there, and that's right. That's not any. Right. That's not a good recipe. So um, to me, a leek looks like a great big green onion. Mm -hmm. But um, just make sure you you like she said, wash it really good, and um, and don't use that really tough green part. No. So it's really simple to eat um, to use, and it's very mild. It just kind of gives a real subtle mild flavor. So I like it. It's just something different. It's kind of pretty. It looks yeah. like if a fan. If you cannot find the leek, you don't have to use them. You're, I mean, but I, I just think onion. it adds just a little bit like more flavor. Like a sweet, yeah, sweet onion yeah. or a Vidalia onion that's not right. really known to in be In fact, sweet. I have an onion that I used, and um, I've already got it in here um, sauteed until clear and a little brown, and then I'm going to add the leek. Okay, did I get that going This good? I yeah. just did just to show them. So the, I add the, add the leek and add the carrot. And you want to saute that for just a, just a, um, just probably two minutes or so just to get it um, a little tender. tender. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I also like to add my brown rice. And this is a medium uh, grain brown rice. This is uh, raw. And I like to add that and let that kind of toast a little bit with it. I like the flavor that that gives. Nuts. And then, um, just for the sake of time, we're not going to let it. I would, I would go ahead and toast that for probably two minutes. But you'll have to s make sure you stir constantly because it will burn, mm -hmm. and you do not want that. Okay, I don't want that. So boy, am I stirring. I am That's not letting up on this thing. <laughs> I am watching it. And then I like to add my um, McKay's chicken style seasoning broth. This is a vegan seasoning. And I like to add this to the, um, to the water. And then some salt. And I'm not going to add all this salt. I'm just going to put some taste, salt so, to taste. Yeah. So just, just sprinkle a little bit. Um, you don't want to add a lot. McKay's and, already has some salt in it. That's why. Right. And um, dump this in. Woo! Whoa. Now, here's this. Now, add two bay leaves to this. Make sure that when, right before you serve it, you take that ba those bay it's leaves like, out. It's the nice and hunt for the bay leaf. Here's this. Find the bay leaf party. You can take, well, you got a big knife, but that's okay. You can just put this aside, and you can, we're going to cut these, um, Bro the broccoli florets. florets into smaller pieces. Okay. You can break them too. And also, I'm, um, a lot of people 
they'll um, not use the stems of the broccoli. You can use the stems of the broccoli. I like the stems. I, yes, I peel them just a little bit and then dice them up like you would um, your carrot or something. And the stem is actually has an awesome flavor. Mm -hmm. I love the flavor of it. I do too. And so I think. Don't, I think the florets get a lot of uh, PR, but nobody's doing the PR for the stems. So exactly. Good, good job. Exactly. I, my family all loves the stems. I mean, mm -hmm. when I just steam broccoli, I make sure they're they're all um, making sure that they get the stems of course before they get the the. My kids call them trees. That so. might that yes, might sir. that might come um, uh, from mom having us eat the whole you know the whole thing that we're not wasting anything. We oh, developed a love for some parts of the vegetables that maybe other people don't. But like don't potatoes, you baked potatoes. We all love the skins as much true. as the potato. When you know? David was little, Cinda's um, son, uh -huh. he ate broccoli. He ate everything. Yes. There wasn't anything that I, I can't remember anything that mm -mm. he wouldn't try. No. No. He was willing to try anything. And he's an awesome cook now, yes, too. Yes, he is. He may be in medical school because he's going to be a doctor, but he is an awesome cook. Yes, he is. And he he's not picky. He will try anything. Yeah. And I, and he's so not picky my, like his Aunt Brenda. My hus but, but so does my husband, Joel. Katie, mm -hmm. Katie will try yeah, anything, good too. too though. So yeah. all of them are. Yeah. I had a rule when the kids were little. I never, I, I don't believe in making your child eat something that they really don't like. Yep. But I had a rule. They had to take Taste at once. least one bite. Yeah. And they had to eat one whole bite. I didn't make them have any more. And if they, if they would just try one whole bite, and then that's all they had to do. If they but didn't see, like as it, an they didn't adult, I graduated from that rule. <laughs> oh, yeah. Brenda has me take one bite. I take her. My rule now is have Cinda take one bite. Check out that expression on her face, and then if it's a good, you go to. Then you get your bite. You know. Oh, keep going. Oh, I I did She's all the ones. She's stopping on me. I what did is all the up ones with this? On my tray. What is up with this? Well, She's stopping on it's me. It's just that I had this huge big knife. Well, I tell you what. While we're finishing with while this. While we're finishing with this, we um, we can go ahead. My and, Mexican corn towel. Well, you know what? Let me just show them. Let me finish telling them what we do yeah, about so this. Yeah, let's do that. We'll finish. We'll finish getting. You want to get all the broccoli in here, and you'll cook this. Um, I cover it and cook it for about 15 to 20 minutes, and you'll want to make sure that the rice is finished and your and your vegetables tender. are tender, and then take take the lid off, take the bay leaves out, and then you will add. Two, um, I mean, two cups. No, not two cups. One eight-ounce container of the Better Than um, uh, Cream Cheese. It's Tofuti brand. Is that's the brand better we like the cheese. best. It's mm -hmm. the Better Than Cream Cheese. And if you cannot find this soy product, then go ahead and use the light cream cheese. Uh, and the, but you'll put that in and just continue to stir until it melts and blends. And let me show you what it looks like oh, when it's all beautiful. finished. Oh, that's beautiful. Look how she garnishes. Cinda has mastered that art of garnishing. Look at that. With that beautiful, just that's with a scallion and some carrot curls. Isn't that beautiful? And that is a delicious soup that you'll want to try. Um, but then something else you're going to want to try is your Mexican corn, corn chowder. chowder. Let me read the recipe for you. You will need one medium onion, a half a cup of celery, one tablespoon of soy margarine, two tablespoons of sweet red pepper, one tablespoon of jalapeno peppers, a half a cup of green chilies, one teaspoon of celery salt, one tablespoon of McKay's chicken style seasoning, one teaspoon of chili powder, three cups of creamed corn, two tablespoons of sugar, one teaspoon of parsley, one cup of silk creamer, original flavor, and two tablespoons of cornstarch. Well, I love corn chowder. I love potato corn chowder. And uh, I love uh, uh, corn and uh, potatoes. So I usually do a lot of different kinds of soups with corn potatoes and potatoes uh, for a base. Mm -hmm. But uh, on this particular recipe, I chose to leave off the potatoes. Sorry about that, sis. Oh, you know, I mean, what you know. is up with that? <laughs> <laughs> so um, today we're having uh, corn chowder, but we are have a little twist to it. It is Mexican corn chowder, so we are going to add a little heat to this. Oh, and so you're going to make up, make it I'm, up to me. That's it. See? Okay. So don't relax. No All potatoes, right. but she's getting the heat. So, you know, I'm thinking of you, sis. I love you. <laughs> so, um, so, speaking of the heat, potatoes. well, I'll tell you what, I can make some separate for you and we'll add potatoes. If you can add potatoes at home too. It will not hurt it a bit. In okay, fact, it might on. make it better. 
So, um, it's on. Okay, we're going to just put a little soy margarine in here. And um, and then we're going to put our onions right in there. You can just get every little bit about that. And I like the sweet um, onions when I'm making this oh, recipe. Oh, my husband loves the Celery sweet onions. chopped and diced fine like that. And, um, and then also, you, right at the same time, we're going to put those um, red diced red peppers. Now, honestly, I love uh, red peppers, too. And I could have actually doubled that. But um, my husband isn't as fond of them as I are. So we, you know, I split the difference. I, and, you know, I, 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 really, you that, know, I put really half nice in, you. you know, I just make, he can tolerate a little, you see. So that's what I did. But, just because, because you're such a nice person. Well, um, because I love my husband, you know. <laughs> we all we all try to please our that's husband. Right. I think that's right. And important. I think that's important. Yes. Yes. And honey, I love you. This one's for you, okay? Um, and you guys can have some too. And you know, actually, and really, it's not just about the food that you prepare. It's about the manner in which it's presented. It's 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 yes. a, I get some, it's a labor of love the whole way through. Not just the food and the recipe, right. but also like Linda said, the manner in which it's presented. You know, have a yes. nice table set and have right. you know have uh, uh, make it special for your family and those you love. Not just you know, not just for your guests. And it's so. time to have good conversation at the table and find out how everyone's day is. You know, it's a good bonding right. time. Yeah. I also think because we're doing it because mm -hmm. we love our husbands and our family that we need. To make the effort right. of making it nutritious, exactly, exactly. Yep. We want to keep our families around for a long time. That's right. <laughs> you know. So um, while Linda sautéing that, and that just take a few more minutes, um, I'm going to just add a little bit of the seasoning to that. And what that does is just wake up those that aroma there. You can almost smell that. Um, oh yes. And a little garlic shot. That was just a little. Uh, okay, chili. it's waking me up. That was just a little touch of chili. You ought to be there. over here. <laughs> You'd be wide awake. <laughs> now, when you add your seasonings to the to the um, uh, and heat them up beforehand, when it you really saute does them, enhance yeah. oh, the, it does. the flavors. It really does when you saute them and they're like that. And you can see in here how it changes the color of them a little bit. It will not affect how fast they cook or whatever like that. But it will affect your stirring hand because you're going to have to keep that stirring. You know, you don't want them to burn. You don't so. want them to burn. And, okay, okay. And that makes a big difference too. And uh, so while you're doing that, now I'm really going to help her out here with this. These are the jalapenos. You're going to love that. We can double that up for you as okay. well. And, and honestly, I could double that for me. I love a little spice in my soup. So this is just a little bit for you. But if you're brave at all or you uh, hot pepper lovers, add more. You know, I, I really think that that makes... You know, usually a recipe has like a secret ingredient. That that would be it. That would be it. That would okay. be it, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add the green chili the same way. Just so you're getting that aromas now, you're getting that. <laughs> I am getting it. <laughs> and it, it smells good, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's really overtaking me right now. All right, so I'm going to be carefully putting this in. The cream corn. This is just cream corn, canned cream corn. And... Um, now you're going to put that down on low. You will cover it, and um, and that you will. Um, oh, wait a minute! I don't want the Hollywood recipe here. We got. I have a, a just a touch of sugar in there, and a little of the uh, parsley in there. So now we're talking. Now what you're going to do is you're going to cover that. We're going to cook it on low for about you know 20 minutes to really all those um, vegetables of the red pepper. I want the red pepper to be you know nice and tender and I also want the celery to be nice and tender. I don't like that crunchy you know taste but if you like the crunchy taste it doesn't have to be completely tender but that's my preference and since it's my recipe I'm sharing that with you. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that. And uh, then what you're going to do too is, is before you're ready to serve um, I'm gonna you you were gonna add a little silk creamer now I have some here that I brought so you know this is soy milk it is um, it is not a dairy product and I get the original flavor for this okay and Cindy let's go ahead and if you would we've got a container over here if you would I'll pour you out um, uh, it says shake well so I want to obey Do I need to keep and shake this? well yeah, you I better shake it <laughs> really good because you know you never know <laughs> We want it well mixed. I think it's well mixed. <laughs> I think we got that covered. Here, we want one cup of that. Oh, you got okay. a cup, measuring cup in there. I didn't even think about that. See? There you go. Put one cup in there. And if it's over, you know, a little bit, that's not going to hurt anything either. And um, so put that in there. And then we have some cornstarch. 
And if you would just take a fork and mix that. Now you want a cold liquid. If anytime you're using cornstarch, whether it's um, uh, uh, milk, like a cold milk, or if it's cornstarch and water, whatever it is, it's got to be cold. Cornstarch and any hot liquid is you're going to produce lumps. Right. And I just don't like lumps. So. And you want to just stir it until it's blended. That's right. And, and sometimes you have to make sure because there'll be um, lumps at the bottom of this and you'll uh -huh. want to make sure that you get them out because you do not, other, they will not come out when you put them into a cold, uh, hot liquid. No, and it's just a nice big old lump. But if you like lumps, you go for it, you know. That's right. <laughs> so how's that coming along over there? Is it it's looking good? It smells good. I want to show you. It looks good. I want to mm. show you the difference of what it looks like when you add that. And um, so let's just do that right now. Go ahead. Oh, here you go. Um, so sis, just stir, and I take a good look here. Watch how the color of your whole soup changes when she's um, when I'm pouring this in here, and that makes all the difference. Um, we're gonna just keep letting that cook just a little bit more. It will thicken up really nice. And let's take a look at the one that we've are, that I've already prepared for you. I've garnished it with just a few chives on top. But you can take a look and see it it's a good. nice, thick, creamy soup. Doesn't that look good enough to eat? And hmm, uh, speaking of good enough to eat, uh, <laughs> I think I should probably our, taste it because I'm not sure taster. about the potatoes, you know. Yeah, it, she's missing, it, missing those potatoes. But yeah, hey. it doesn't have the potatoes in it, so let me just see. Hmm. All right. Well. Dum, da dum, dum. Mm. That is good. It's very good. Well, thank you. Love the jalapenos in it. Okay, but could it be a little more for you? It could be a little bit more jalapenos and some potatoes. All right. But it so, is good without so, the potatoes. So try it. Try it this way, and then try it the other version and put Cinder's version on there, because I'm sure you're going to love that, too. And I, <laughs> I'm quite sure it, 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 I'd highly recommend it, even without tasting it right now. <laughs> and we have one more recipe. That's right. And what are we cooking now? The next oh, one? Oh, Linda's going to make oh, some homemade soup. vegetable soup. That's right. The home style. The home style, mm -hmm. yes. So we'll put up the recipe. Okay. Okay, for that, you will need four cups of shredded cabbage, two cups of carrots, one cup of onions, three cups of potatoes, ten cups of water, four tablespoons of McKay's chicken seasoning, one tablespoon of parsley flakes, one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of low sodium salt. I love eating vegetables oh, and I too. love soup and so what a good combination. There's not very many there vegetables I don't like actually. I love vegetables. Yeah, I, could, too. I could make a vegetable plate anywhere and make that a meal. I, I really just love every, well not every vegetable, but most of them. <laughs> I think I do love every vegetable. You and do? you know, mm -hmm. for good health. How about health, rutabagers? Yep. Is that a vegetable? It's a root vegetable. <laughs> it's a root vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I don't think I'm fond of rutabagers. <laughs> it is important to double up on the vegetables and the fruits and mm -hmm. grains and legumes, mm -hmm. and you have good nutrition. That's right. So this soup, it doesn't matter what order you put it in. I've already put my water in here, and if you could turn on the I'll do it. Um, heat there. And all we're going to do is put all the ingredients in the kettle. Okay. And this is our cabbage. cabbage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Our garden cabbage. And we've got That's some. That's onions. Mm -hmm. I'll get that. You'll get brain. that one? Yeah. Mom might be watching. <laughs> Carrots. Okay. Oh, don't forget the potatoes for me. Potatoes. Right. Now, this and would be a good crock pot soup too, wouldn't it? Well, it gets done really fast, so you can put it in, but it only takes it only takes about 20, 25 minutes. Oh, wow. And the reason I made this soup is because it's a favorite in the Johnson household. My husband grew up with this kind of soup. Oh, okay. And it's just that simple, and you just let it simmer together for about, well, till the cabbage is cooked and the carrots. Mm -hmm. and, wow. Um, and that's all you do. Now, um, th was this handed down from Grandma Johnson to yes. Grandma Johnson to Grandma yes. Johnson? It's wow. A, it's a Johnson <laughs> favorite. And every time I make this soup, this really easy soup, my husband, he just, he comes home and he goes, oh, it smells so good in here because must bring back some of those childhood memories. You know? so, yeah. That shows us yeah. how important it is that we create memories for our families and our, that's you know, right. our children. You're exactly right. Because that's what they're going to remember. They're going to, mm -hmm. there's certain smells that right. take us back home you know that that uh, even to this day I can't 
I can't tell you, I can't um, smell cabbage or see cabbage and rice, and I think of cabbage rolls. And in our family, we grew up on cabbage rolls, and that was, mm -hmm. you know, Hungarian cabbage rolls. Mm -hmm. I, that's my favorite food, I think. Mm -hmm. If I could eat cabbage rolls every day, I would be so happy. I love that food. You're exactly right. We need to be creating yes. memories for mm -hmm. our family. There's so many families nowadays that don't sit down to a meal, or they think that if they grab fast food, bring it home, and serve it, um, you know, for supper, that's a family meal. And really, you should get your children involved in, mm -hmm. my husband helps me cook, the kids help me cook, they both, both David and Katie, and they jump right in there, and you know, that's making memories for them too. That's right. And you know, another thing too is, is if you um, do have to stop and get fast food because you have some of those days, then, you know, bring it home and sit down at the table. A lot of people bring home the fast food or right. they eat it on the way. Right. Or, or in when front they, of a TV. Or in front of the TV when they get home. And there's no family bonding. And every single yes. day it is important to bond as a family. Exactly. To have a meal together. And that's to have, right. Th that's right. In and fact, I think studies have shown that more people bond over meals than any other activity that you do as a family. That's how critically important it is that we take the time to sit at right. a table and set a nice pretty table you know put put your napkins out there and and teach your children how to the correct way to set a table and and sit down and have conversation in our home uh, with we have two girls uh, when our children were being raised we they were not allowed to to be disciplined or talk about anything unpleasant at dinner at dinner time we, that was our time to get to hear about the kids days you know what was on their mind what mm -hmm. you know things that they happened with their friends it was it wasn't the time for us to tell them what they did wrong or what they're going to get in trouble for or, or you know it was always pleasant conversation right and that's not a bad rule to have i don't think i think you know? no it's excellent and it's not you know it's not a time to say well don't chew with your mouth full and yes. don't do this because then i all of a sudden, you know, you just get uptight. It's better to do it by example. Yes. You know, and, and you asked, please pass this. And you're teaching your kids by example instead right. of constantly nagging them for every little single thing. It takes the joy out That's of dining right. together. And you know, if you have trouble thinking of, of recipes to make so that you can have a supper, if you don't want soup, like we're showing you today, we have three cookbooks that um, will give you lots of ideas for simple and easy suppers and nutritious. And we're going to show you right now how you can get one of those cookbooks. Or all three of them. <laughs> If you've enjoyed the recipes you've seen today and would like to purchase your own copy of their new cookbook, Cooking for Two with a Mitch of Sisters, you can do so by writing to 3ABN, Post Office Box 220, West Frankfort, Illinois, 62896. That's 3ABN, Post Office Box 220, West Frankfort, Illinois, 62896. You can call 618-627-4651. That's 618-627-4651 or visit mitchiffsisters.com and order online. That's mitchiffsisters.com. Hello, I'm Molly Steenson. Today I want to let you know how much we appreciate what you do for this ministry. As you know, 3ABN's message must be fresh, up-to-date, and innovative. For that reason, we are constantly developing new programs for a wide range of viewers and listeners around the world. All six of our channels carry a large percentage of original programming. In fact, our English language television channel produces 69% original programming. Our Spanish and Portuguese channel produces 67%, and our Russian language channel produces 100%. Compared to other networks, those numbers are almost unheard of. But the Lord continues to bless us with the finest teachers, preachers, health presenters, and guests day after day and year after year. There is so much that goes into making a television program. There are many who work behind the scenes and each person's skills are used to produce a simple but straightforward program that doesn't distract from the message. You see, everything we do is geared to bring sinners to the cross. It's all about bringing the hope of salvation to those who haven't heard about Jesus. 
and in reconnecting those who have rejected him. We strive to meet their needs in a variety of ways, but ultimately, the only solution is a relationship with Jesus. Whether it's a testimony of a changed life or a program specifically for children, we seek to bring honor and glory to the Lord each minute of every day, and that's a monumental task. You see, we air 168 hours of programming each week on 3ABN Television, 3ABN Latino Network, 3ABN Radio Network, as well as on 3ABN's International, Russian, and Sunbeam channels for a total of 1,008 hours of programming each week. How can we accomplish this with such a small staff? The answer is very simple. Every aspect of 3ABN's ministry beats in sync with the heart of God. The Lord makes it possible, and He uses you to help. From the beginning, your prayers and financial support have made it possible for us to bring you the very best. And nearly 25 years later, our message is still strong as we cling to our mandate to reach every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. So thank you for all that you do for 3ABN. Your prayers are felt each day, both here at our ministry headquarters and around the world. And if the Holy Spirit impresses you to support 3ABN's worldwide ministry, please send your tax deductible love gifts to 3ABN, Post Office Box 220, West Frankfort, Illinois, 62896, or call us at 618-627-4651 during regular business hours. Our prayer is that God will richly bless you. It has been so much fun being with you it today. Has. I think it's been a super fun time. <laughs> super right. duper soup time. That's right. <laughs> and we're going to show you some of the dishes that we've made. Yes. Oh, the Tuscan four bean. Four beans, and that's, that's right. That's delicious. And then we have my Mexican corn chowder. And uh, don't don't forget to add those potatoes for Cinda's version. Oh, and the broccoli rice soup. Mmm. Mm. Zesty red lentil. That's, well, that's right. That's good too. And Cinda I, it, would cook that up a notch too. Ball game. Now, oh, we have ball no, my bar, oh, ballpark that's soup. That's right. And uh, also we have. Um, the home style vegetable soup. Well, that's all the time we have for now. Until next time, may, may all your meals be seasoned with God's love. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.